All right, Rimi. The future of the Ukar tribe is in your paws. What will you do? Will you settle here on this island and do your best to gather up as much food for your tribe? Or will you work hard to take care of all of the weakened members, all of the no paws, all of the blind creatures, the doubled up immunity sickness that we have? Or will you focus on having the strongest babies possible and sending them on to the next island? And I think you guys know what Rimi is probably going to pick, but welcome back to the Ukar tribe, everyone. We are here with our current leader, Rimi, with her beautiful orange eyes. I actually find her to be quite the attractive creature. I really love that she took over the tribe when her mother died the day she was born and she was raised under Lala, the tutelage of Lala, the snowy creature from the snowy world. And so she has all of the knowledge of the snowy lands in her mind, but also the obligation left behind by her mother and grandparents before her to take care of her siblings and nieces and nephews and the other members of her tribe. So what is Remy going to do? And I feel like, especially because she's proven to be a very compassionate alpha pack leader, she is actually uh, pretty worried about all of the creatures who don't have a lot of special abilities. They don't have a lot of strength. They have short-sighted eyes, like Rimu over here, so he can't really see anything other than this tree that he is exceptionally territorial about, and that's why he's staying over there. And she's worried about Eva little Dukta, who managed to wander in as just one of the wanderers on the island, a young creature who was just looking for food and stealing their berries, and instead of chasing him away, even though he has genetics that make him very not good for our family. Their short-sighted eyes, low fertility, he has hemophilia, he just doesn't have anything, especially with a no paw, that we want to pass on to our genetics. But she still took him in! Still took him in! And we even have had rumor of this poor blind creature, little Sintra, lost and left on the edges of the beach, unable to move anywhere, just standing, clinging to his father's bones. Oh, Sintra, you're gonna make tears come into my eyes, waiting for somebody to come rescue him. So what's going to happen? Is Rimi going to just like grab the best of the best and run off to the next island? Or is that compassion of hers going to slow her down and get the tribe all tangled up in trouble? Well, I think she's going to try to balance both sides of that, that dilemma. She's going to try to be compassionate and try to take care of the members of her tribe and her family who are weaker and can't see as well, can't smell as well, can't feed themselves as well. But she knows from the stories that Lala has left her that the snowy lands are not a place for those weaker creatures to go. And so now she is uh, kind of eyeing up the new possibility of having children of her own with Oak here and hoping that if their children are strong and healthy enough, she might be able to send them on to the next land to search out those snowy worlds. So let's go ahead and get started. Dun dun dun! I hear coughing and sneezing. All right, so Remy, we're going to actually have uh, Vanu do a little bit of scouting around the tree for us, just to see if by chance we run into a possible nest spot. I don't think we will, but it would be really awesome. Darn, no nest over there. We're going to have Kunar, one of the two twins, wiggle his way up here. No nest over there, though he did find some nuts. His little sister, uh, or I should say his twin sister, Silala, is going to come over and she can actually help out. Oh no, there's a whole rock in the way. She can help out with gathering up the nuts and gathering up uh, those for food. No, Remy, you weren't supposed to move. How did I misclick on Remy? Oh, I'm so mad right now. I was not trying to click on Remy. I thought I had Silala selected. Oh, that's so frustrating. All right, Oak, you're gonna get over there and we're gonna be clearing the way over. We're gonna work our way over to Remy and start having her and Oak have children. Remy is going to try to take good care of her entire tribe, but she really is focused on trying to have strong, healthy children. And I think with her and Oak, yeah, they should for the most part have normal eyesighted children. So we'll go ahead and put Claw in to start adding that as something that they could have. And I think the runner's leg will give them collecting. And maybe we should put in ram horns at some point. They might have a ram horn child actually. So Remy and Oak are going to have some babies pretty soon that will try to be strong enough to take care of the tribe. Tanar might come over and have some children as well, but for now he can be responsible for gathering from these berry bushes. And then we're letting little Dukta still gather up from these berries. Even though he is not an official member of the tribe, we invited him in out of that compassionate part of our heart, and he is responsible for tending to these berry bushes. And then of course we have Rimu, who I don't think we will have, have babies unless we're really desperate for his immunity genes, but Rimu really, um, 
I might move him up to be able to gather up from that berry bush because I think there's a bunny. There is a bunny eating those berries. No, but I think that we might have Rimu move away from his tree, possibly. For some reason, the creatures of this tribe, the Yukara tribe, are proving to be a lot more territorial than I'm used to with our stories, so we'll have to see. But Tracker and his brother Duke Knoll down here have actually heard rumor of a little one who is in need of help. They have heard somewhere in the distance a lot of calls for help lately, and they're off to go see if they can do something about that. So this is going to be interesting to see if Tracker and Duke Knoll can go and maybe make a big difference in the little life of our lost blind child, Sintra, who's no longer a child and he can't move, but he also does have sickness because of his doubled up immunity. So is there a way we can safely approach him due to our wonderful eyesight and be able to convince him to move closer to us and move into a range where we might be able to at least make sure he can eat? Or is going to help him going to end up getting the, the compassionate tribe members here in a lot of trouble? We're gonna have to see. All right, but Remy, I'm really frustrated with you for scooching like that. I really hope that you'll hold still. I'm going to let Vanu wiggle over here just really quickly, searching for a nest, no nest. So Remy, I'm going to move you towards a berry bush. There should be one nearby, uh, this berry bush in fact. And I'm going to have her become expectant with a child with oak because we don't have a lot of time. She's going to make a nest, and Rimi is going to have her very first child. I'm very excited about that. And she and Oak definitely need to be having some children because they are the only ones with really good uh, immunity genes. So they've got E and G and F and A. So they should have healthy, healthy children. Being able to keep an eye on those immunity genes is very, very important right now. All right, and then Vanyu is at the end of his life. He is A and F, A and G. And Silala, I think Silala unfortunately would just have to play that kind of risky game with some of the other creatures. Vanyu doesn't have very good eyesight though. Oh my gosh, Silala and E and B and Tanar could actually be mates. A and G. Oh, Tanar, you're gonna be zipping across that river in just a second here, buddy. Uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and have Silala and Tanar have some babies. And yeah, I think they're actually blood siblings, but you know what? If they're not going to have any issues because their genetics are so nice, we can't, we can't play around with that. We have to, absolutely have to be a little stricter on keeping those immunity genes diverse or else we're gonna end up with the sicknesses that could spell disaster for our helpful Duke Knoll here. Ah, he can go ahead and snag some of that mole meat while we're over here. And can you see? <gasps> Sintra can see now! Oh my goodness, he can come over and he can approach. We'll go ahead and let him have some food. And he can actually help out. So Duke Knoll has found the missing wanderer and we'll have Tracker go ahead and wiggle his way over to the other side of the tribe. So he can go join us on the edge of the island. And then Rimu, which means like little uh, red oak tree. I think he just is very determined not to leave his tree. So we'll leave Rimu there. He really doesn't want to go anywhere. Uh, but I hope Sentra isn't going to spell disaster for Duke Knoll, trying to do something good and compassionate like Rimi wants. All right, and let's pop over here. Rimi, time to have your baby. I really hope it's a healthy baby. Do I need to worry about normal hind legs? I do not, so we can go ahead and remove that. But I would like to worry about maybe having nimble fingers at the very least. Um, or maybe the poison fangs? Hmm, nimble fingers for now because that would help out with some food and cracking. All right, Remy, baby? Oh, it's one little baby. Oh, she has a fluffy tail. Oh my goodness, you guys. All right, so this is going to be a little baby. Um, let's name her Dust, actually. That's one of the names you guys have suggested. So we have little baby Dust, and look how healthy she is. Oh, just could brush away a tear of joy from my eyes. She has Digging Paw, which is pretty okay for being able to find roots. Stinky Tail, normal eyesight, beautiful. She, she has normal blood clotting, E and F immunity, high fertility. What a wonderful day. What a healthy baby. I am so happy. I am so very, very happy. I'm going to go ahead and have Oak uh, clear away a little spot. We're going to move Remy over. She is going to become pregnant. 
And then we are gonna let her build a little nest to make herself comfortable and just keep having lots of babies right away. And I think that Silala here is going to be um, kind of like a babysitter, I suppose, keeping an eye on how the little one will do. And then let's go ahead, clear away the area around the tree. Vanu doesn't have much time left, but he can go ahead and work on some of these bunnies and clear a path so the next generation can get straight to the port. But good job, Remy. Have lots of healthy babies. I think she's probably super relieved that her daughter is so nice and healthy because she knows that the creatures who go onward are not going to be able to continue the search for snow and survive. After all of the stories that Lala has told her and all of the stories that are passed down from her grandfather, she knows only the strongest can go and that's going to break the hearts of some of her siblings who are just too weak to be able to really survive. And little Dukta here might be very excited and eager and talking about he can't wait to see the snow, but Rimi secretly knows she just can't allow that. It's just never going to happen. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let Sintra keep moving. I wonder if he knows that he's basically like a Typhoid Mary walking time bomb with his illness. And unfortunately, again, he can't go very far. He can only go as far as Duke Knoll's eyesight is. So maybe we'll be able to find him like a buddy, a good spot to be able to hang out at and help with, but I'm not sure. Also, because Rimu has collecting, digging, and cracking, he's actually quite proficient at gathering up food from this spot. And I imagine he's very territorial about it. So we'll just leave him there. Tracker has semi-decent genetics. Uh, yep, not the kind of genetics I can really mix with Sila, but we'll send Tracker over here. He can take over this berry bush collecting spot for a little while. And then let's see, can I get you? All right, I'm gonna have to move Tanara across the river and he is going to become Silala's mate. And that's gonna really help us out because they have good immunity genes to mix together. So hopefully they'll have healthy, safety, healthy, safety, healthy, safe babies. All right, so let's see. Remy, let's continue adding to your little family. Is that melon? Is that? No, it's just black fur. Wow, look at her. She's got the claw. Yes, we have claw here. That is so cool. So let's give this little one a name. Well, we have dust for her sister. And let's name this girl. Um, hmm. Let's name her. I'm looking over all the names you guys have suggested. I really like, I really like, is she, is she big body? She is big body. So let's name her Atsu. -i. Atsu -i. A lot of you guys went with Japanese words for naming the creatures, which cracks me up because I have taken Japanese guys. I've got a few years of Japanese under my belt. So I understand some of the words, but there we go. All right, so we've got, we've got our little ones kind of laid out. We're taking care of everybody. Got healthy little girls. I think Oak is probably quite proud. Let's go ahead and start clearing away some of the grass so we can see what we're doing. Vanu doesn't have much longer for this world, but he's very happy to help clear out and kind of take care of the area that that little Remy is asking them to help with. Oh, and look at Remy! She's all warmed up. She must be happy because she's watching her family grow and the pack seems to be doing well. We're actually gathering tons of food. All right, and that sounds like it's about time for another romance to begin. So we're going to step up here. And Silala is actually going to step right over... Should I leave her here? You know what? I will leave her here. Silala is going to stay here, and she's going to make a nest. And we're going to have two babies come in next time. And Kunar is going to uh, be a little bit surprised to suddenly find himself an uncle. But he's about to become an uncle. And we'll have to see if Silala, who is also feeling nice and warmed up, because she's in a nice little nest, and she's got all of her pack mates around her. I wonder if being in the nest is actually what makes them feel warm or maybe it's just the fact that they've got the babies and they're they're expectant that's so cute all right so they're working on having lots of babies tracker can go ahead and work on gathering up some berries poor dukta i know you may dream of going going and finding <laughs> he may dream of going and finding some of the snow but it's just not gonna happen and then over here duke Knoll can go ahead and collect up some berries and then these two can continue on. I think Sintra is so grateful to have been have been rescued, but 
probably pretty frustrated because he can't go anywhere or do anything. But I think maybe Dukenal is super patient and kind of helping him realize that there's there's a world to be explored. Listen to the waterfall, sit under the waterfall, eat these berries. You don't need to take life so seriously. Just just enjoy the experience. And I wonder if that will help Sintra out. So we'll let him just kind of enjoy living. At least he's not isolated anymore. And his friendship with Duke Knoll should hopefully really help him out. There we go. All right, Remy, you are focused on having lots of babies. Let's see what she has this time. Oh my, what do we have? <gasps> wow, holy moly, look at this. Look at you, little guy. What do we have here? We have got the, um, let's see, the poison fangs and the purple eyes. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Wonderful to see. We're gonna give you a special name, my little friend. So let's see, let's go with uh, Kono, Kono Den, which is a name some of you guys have suggested. All of these are, they are on my giant list of names. And so Kono Den's over here. Look at him. Good to see a male. We kind of need that. But I think that prickly body, that high fertility and, um, his venomous fangs would definitely help us. Hopefully he has good movement when he gets older too. Uh, so we might be able to send a whole bunch of the little ones just off. Oh, look, Dust is feeling warmed up from being part of her pack too. That's so cute. But we might be able to send a whole bunch of our creatures over searching out new lands and trying to make sure that they can find uh, new additions to the world. So, hmm. All right, I'm gonna keep Oak right over here. He can help gather up some berries. Remy is going to step over. She only has a few days left, so I am going to keep her as a baby making machine. And she had a little girl with cracker jaw and pretty good attack. Big body and claw has given, let's see, has given little Naomi, why not? Has given little Naomi quite a punch. So hopefully that'll help us. Normal eyesight, beautiful, A and E immunity. Um. Darn, poor tracker. B and A make it really hard for my creatures to end up with mates because everybody has A immunity, it seems. And then we're going to have Tanar go ahead. Oh, Tanar can help crack open those nuts. Totally forgot about that. He'll go ahead and we'll move Silala over here. And he can mate with her. She can make a nest. Now we're out of material, but I think having the four nest for these two to be able to bounce between will really help out. All right, we'll gather up that nut. And then we're gonna kick the tree again. Oh no, I wonder if building nest under a tree makes it so you can't get any more nuts. <laughs> that was not part of my plan. <laughs> that was not part of my mas master scheme whatsoever. All right, we've got our very, our very obsessive, very possessive little Rimu still staked out here. And Dukta, I feel bad for leaving him over there. Maybe he'll have to start making a journey so that he can join the tribe as well. Because I don't want to leave him all isolated. Oh, can we get this mole? Ah, oh, dang it, it got out of the way. Well, you tried, Sintra. All right, so I think Sintra can wiggle his way over. Maybe Sintra and Dukta would be able to become friends. But I think Dukta has a good heart. He managed to bring uh, the creatures who otherwise would be abandoned back over. In fact, I think that's what will happen. We'll have to see if we could get Rimu convinced to leave his tree. I think he's like an old hermit who lives under his tree and doesn't want to have anybody mess with him. You can't get him to budge. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what's happening with the rest of the tribe, but you can't make him leave. This is his tree and his tree alone. But we'll have to see if we get him to move. But all right, two pregnant females on the nest. Oh! <gasps> Wow, look at those! Little Cora, who we're gonna change her name over to, let's go with, uh, let's go with, a lot of you guys gave so many Japanese words for names, there's actually a lot of repeats, but let's go with Millie. I know that seems kind of random, but Millie just sounds like a really charming name. So she's got big body, she's got runner's leg and velvet paw, normal eyesight, a beautiful fluffy stinky tail, and uh, high fertility. So I feel like we're ending up with some really nice healthy, healthy, healthy family members. And look at little Atsui, she's able to gather up a little bit of the meat just like that. Remy. 
Your compassion appears to have pleased the niche gods because they don't have Tata's curse. I feel like Lala, actually, a lot of you guys want Lala to be the snow goddess of fertility and like nest, even though that seems odd to have a snow goddess be that. I agree. I feel like we have our berry eye pickers, our seers of the sea. We've got Clay, who's our trickster god. And then we've also got like Lala. I loved Lala so much. And I feel like she makes a really great fertility goddess goddess for our creatures. All right, uh, Konoden, we're going to have you move as soon as you can. There's so many creatures in the way. Dust is probably going to come over and she can play with her sister and they can work on clearing out the way towards what will one day be their future port to be able to go explore new lands. Naomi, um, we've got to move a lot of our creatures actually. <laughs> All right, let's try moving to Nara up here. And that will let little Kanoden scooch over and Naomi can come over to play with him. And then we will have Sila pop up here, mate with her mate and jump into her other nest. Then we'll have Rimi pop over, mate with her mate and jump into her nest. And then Oak is just going to continue very contentedly like helping out with the berries, but I might have a move around to collect up some of the roots too. And then speaking of which, oh, there we go. Tanar can actually pop over here and help out with those bits. And then do you have any attack? Kunar can, uh, I was gonna say Kunar can help out with attacking that bunny. But there we go. All right. Kunar just defended the berry bush from that bunny. So wonderful. The whole family is doing so much better over here. Yeah, I do think, I wonder, I, I kind of feel like Rimi might end up becoming a figure of compassion, but by having a compassionate heart and not just like aggressively chasing away a whole bunch of the potential tribe members, it seems we've done pretty well. But I wonder if we continue to do that well if we continue to exercise our compassion by allowing Sintra to uh, join us and come with us. So we might start bringing Sintra and Dukta to the main body of the tribe. And hopefully that compassionate move on Rimi's part won't come back to bite us because they'll bring their sicknesses with them. But otherwise, I don't know. I don't think we can move old man Rimu. He's a cranky hermit. He wants to stay near his tree. So we'll leave him there and just see how that works out. But we'll have to see if um, bringing Sintra with his illness is going to be something we end up regretting. But all right, so we're doing pretty good. We've got a healthy lineup of babies. I would say after a couple more rounds of babies and as they start to age up, we should be able to send the whole little cluster of them onto the next island. And I think we're just going to island jump now that I know what the ports are supposed to look like until we are able to settle onto the snowy lands and see if we can survive. But I really I really love where the, the stories are going. Everybody seems to be so nice. Wonderful. All right, let me know who your favorites currently are. I have to say, I love the Lamilli's horns. There's something just adorably charming and like almost like an adorable little yak about her. I like how Atsui probably has a lot of her mother Rimi's spirit. And oh, I almost forgot we have another baby, the new little baby, another new female. And I think we're going to name her, we're gonna no go with, you guys have a lot of names that are Japanese names that crack me up. Oh my goodness, because I recognize so many of them. Let's go with uh, Lohina. That one's a nice different one. And it's very nice. And I love her blue eyes. I love that she has both cracking and collecting ability and that she has healthy genes. So we're doing, we're doing a lot better. Good, good, Remy. Keep up your compassion, it seems to be helping. But we're gonna be gathering up all of these youngsters and herding them onto the next island probably next time, guys. We don't have very much longer with Rimi and having her babies and all of her children are growing up having been very healthy. She's put a lot of confidence in being able to tell them that they have a new land to go forward and explore. But I wonder if there's going to be any bitter hanger-oners who might think that they're going along too and might sneak their way on to the tiles and try to, to travel to the new world uh, just when we get all of our new little babies ready to go for there too. So, hmm, I don't think Dukta would do that, but he has shoved himself into our tribe before. So we'll have to see what happens and hopefully we will be at the snow and searching for those hidden genetics very soon. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.